What's up Skate Athletics fam? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're here to talk about one of skateboarding's most common injuries, the ankle sprain. If you do a simple Google search, you'll often come across his acronym RICE, which stands for Rest, Ice, Compress, and Elevate. But is this really the right thing to do? Well, no. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with his acronym, but growing up here in America, basically I was told to use RICE therapy Seriously, I don't know, as early as I can remember. I've rolled both my ankles, I don't know, like a billion times. And my left one especially, I had three really, really bad ankle sprains and spent a bunch of time um, with the athletic trainers. And yes, those individuals helped me so much to get the ankle healed and to get back on the court. But I always felt like I was just lacking stability and I just kept rolling it over and over and over. So as far as fixing that problem for the long term, I always thought there was something better. And now having worked with a variety of athletes, hearing what they've done, hearing their stories, reading research papers, I've realized there's a much better way. So after doing some reading, I found out that the RICE acronym was coined by Dr. Gabe Merkin in his book called The Sports Medicine Book, written in 1978. So I don't have access to this book, so I don't have access to what resources he was using at the time, but let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and assume he was basing this off of some concrete evidence. But since then, the same dude in 2015 came out and retracted his statement. He published this online saying that it appears that ice and complete rest may delay healing instead of helping. Nice one, mate. I said, nice, bro. Just kidding, but at least he's coming out and admitting that, right? So to avoid, once again, putting all our trust in this guy, let's find a better scientific resource to see what the most current science has to say. So I found what seems to be the most current study from the National Athletic Trainers Association, written in 2013. Two researchers did a deep dive into all of the data surrounding ankle sprains to identify all of the different studies that had at least one component of rice therapy in their protocols. And after analyzing all of the data, the researchers concluded that there is insufficient evidence from the randomized controlled trials to determine the relative effectiveness of rice therapy for acute ankle sprains in adults. All right, there we go. Rice therapy is fully debunked. No, just kidding. So there is still a use for ice, but we're going to kind of find out where. So stick with me. Okay, so first things first, let's start by diagnosing how bad your ankle sprain really is. Before we get started, I do need to state that this video is going to focus on low lateral ankle sprains, which involves the ligaments of the subtalar joint, as opposed to the high ankle sprain, which involves the ligaments between the tibia and fibula. Alright, so there are three grades of ankle sprains. A grade 1 ankle sprain is when the ligaments or ligament is overstretched but not torn. There will be minor swelling and your ankle is going to feel a bit sore. A grade 2 sprain means you have a partial tear of one of these two ligaments. This type of sprain is associated with prolonged pain, swelling, and there could be some bruising. At this stage, you may be able to put a little bit of weight on your ankle, but it's definitely going to be pretty uncomfortable. And finally, a grade 3 sprain means you've fully torn one of these ligaments, and you probably heard a popping sound when you rolled your ankle. You'll experience severe pain, swelling, and bruising. And since those ligaments are fully torn, that ankle is going to feel really unstable and it's probably not going to be able to support any of your weight. Once you to go to the doctor. So go to the doctor if you have a grade two or three. If there's a lot of swelling, you just gotta make sure nothing's broken or if it's fully torn, then you could either potentially get surgery or you're gonna have to go through a full rehab program. If you're only experiencing minor swelling, you could probably hold off for a while, just see how the recovery process goes and make sure you're progressing. Otherwise, go see a doctor. All right, now we're moving on to the good stuff. Before we get started with this section, I just want to state all this information is coming from this paper, the 
National Athletic Trainers Association position statement, conservative management and prevention of ankle sprains in athletes. Once again, this one was published in 2013, but it seems to be the most up-to-date literature. Okay, so due to the previous nonsense that happened in the ankle recovery world, the claims that rice therapy was the gold standard, these researchers went out of their way and created a taxonomy to kind of rank the strength of therapy modality. So in other words, they're assigning letter grades to each recovery modality. So for example, ice is gonna get a grade, elevation will get a grade, and so on. Essentially, this is just an awesome BS filter that they're using. And if you wanna look more into that, I'm gonna post that paper in the description so you can go ahead and read through the whole taxonomy and how they actually ranked each study based on effectiveness and consistency of results. Just know that the only way that a recovery modality is gonna receive an A grade, it means that all the results were effective consistent and then all the data was collected on good quality patient oriented evidence so here we have it here's the taxonomy that's created so in the first block we have NSAIDs which have been shown to be effective in reducing swelling and overall pain which improves short-term function after an acute ankle sprain however if you read deeper into the paper this is really referring to grade one ankle sprains so when you're able to put weight on the ankle so if you have a grade one sprain the swelling is quite minor and you're struggling with work or something feel free to take an NSAID to relieve some of the pain. However, if you have a grade two or three, from what I've read, do not rely on the NSAIDs, especially to control the swelling. If you need it to control a little bit of the pain, that's okay, just don't rely on them. I would always recommend just follow what the label says or take even less. So in the next block, we have functional rehab is more effective than immobilization. And this is referring to that R in rice. So you don't just wanna rest. We're gonna talk more about this in the end of the video coming up in a bit with that full program. And in that third block, we have balance training, which has been shown to reduce re-injury rates. Once again, we'll refer to this in a little bit. In category B, we have active and passive mobility training, flexibility, and strength training. And the reason why these are in category B is because there's an overall lack of randomized controlled trials when you're talking about determining the effectiveness of a full length training program. It's really hard to get individuals to commit to that full training program and collect enough consistent data that you'll actually be able to make conclusions from. But I think at this point, it's commonly known that this type of training is what you see in strength and conditioning, and that's really gonna help you recover from your sprain and prevent them in the future. And this is where it gets interesting. Basically, category C is just rice. And if you look at the taxonomy, the C rating means that the information was based on consensus, usual practice, opinion, disease-oriented data, and case studies, which are known to be not as reliable as patient-oriented actual data. So in a short summary, your best path to recovery is going to be combining sections A and B. Use functional rehab, balance training, flexibility, mobility, and strength training as your new gold standard. So of course, there's anecdotal evidence about ice and heat kind of helping ankle sprains and stuff like that. Um, and yes, there's value in that. If you personally like the feel of ice, if that helps you cool the ankle down or helps you relieve some of the pain for a little bit, go for it, use that. But just make sure you're not overdoing it. And please just look a little bit deeper into it so you're not gonna create scar tissue in that front of the ankle that's just gonna sit there and cause you harm in the future. So let's walk through how you're gonna go through this. If you have a grade three sprain, you'll see back on the taxonomy that in category B, immobilization for 10 weeks in a brace is recommended with proper assisted therapy. So that means you've gone to the doctor, got an MRI, gotten a brace, and you're now in physical therapy. Once that grade three sprain turns more into a grade two, you can now start with the functional rehab. And if you haven't gone to the doctor and your ankle is now in a grade two, that's okay, let's just start doing some stuff right now. So functional rehab is basically just moving the ankle around. I'll put some links to some YouTube videos that'll show you some easy exercises that you can do. And we're talking about basically just things like ankle circles, making triangles with your ankle, um, and also allowing some assisted movement. This is where the NSAIDs kick in. So if you need some NSAIDs to power you through the session to diminish some of the pain, that's okay. 
once it's feeling a little bit better and you're now able to put a little bit more weight on the ankle, let's start with some balance exercises. These can include things like single leg isometric holds, single leg half squats, cone reaches, basically just stuff like that. After those balance exercises, now make sure you're incorporating some flexibility and mobility exercises to restore proper range of motion. At the very least, your mobility session should include some foam rolling, some either weighted, dynamic, or just overall mobility exercises, and some static flexibility. Start by loosening up those surrounding muscles with either foam rolling, you can either use just a normal foam roller or a lacrosse ball. I would recommend start with the Achilles, work your way up to the calf, make sure you hit the anterior tibialis. I would also get your hamstrings, quads, basically your whole lower leg. After that, make sure you're doing some mobility exercises to once again, restore that proper range of motion. And whatever exercise you choose is really gonna depend on the severity of your ankle sprain. So if it's pretty bad, start with something light, like the kneeling dorsiflexion stretch. And if you're feeling a little bit better, try some either banded mobility exercises or some weighted ones. And now once you're at this stage, once it starts getting a little bit better, you're moving around, you're restoring some of that range of motion, I would highly recommend, and so would science, to start a strength conditioning protocol that's gonna really focus on balance, neuromuscular control, restoring that hip adductor strength, and eliminating overall muscle imbalances. I know that sounds like a lot and programming could seem a bit daunting. So if you want some help, just reach out to me through my Instagram, Skid Athletics, and we can see what we can do. In the meantime, as a thank you for watching this video, I do want to give you a full ankle rehab workout, which there'll be a PDF posted in the description. So this workout's gonna include three single leg exercises and one exercise specifically for your hip adductor strength. Each of these exercises was selected to challenge your balance and your single leg stability. In addition, these exercises are gonna target your posterior chain, which has been associated with high levels of neuromuscular control. These are all pretty common exercises, so if you need a quick instructional video, just YouTube it and I'm sure there'll be a good walkthrough. The main thing I wanna highlight before you do this workout is the tempo section. So as you see here, the tempo stays three, two, one. So the three stands for three seconds for the lowering phase and the squat, deadlift, and the bridge. And in reference to the abduction when you're bringing your leg closer to you, the two stands for two seconds at the very bottom of the rep. So basically there's just a little pause and the one means one second returning back to that original position. So this is what your squat will look like. Boom, easy. We're not gonna get into that too much, but basically this tempo is gonna help build some strength. So after that strength session, there is now the balance section, which contains one isometric hold and one balance drill. These exercises were selected to challenge your balance and stability when your muscles are fatigued. After that workout, your lower leg should be pretty taxed. So by this point, we're really getting deep into those muscle fibers, working on some strength endurance, and really just increasing overall stability. If you have a pad or BOSU ball, feel free to add it to any of these exercises to add a little challenge. And lastly, after the strength portion, we're now gonna to progress to some foam rolling, to some mobility and some flexibility exercises to restore that proper range of motion and eliminate muscle imbalances. So of course, we're not gonna restore all the range and eliminate all those muscle imbalances in one session. So I would highly recommend doing these flexibility mobility exercises at least five times a week. That may seem like a lot, but honestly, it only takes like 10 minutes and it'll be really, really worth your while. All right, wow. That was a long video. If you're still here, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope this information helps you with your rehab. If you have any questions or want any additional information, please either just comment below or shoot me a DM once again on my Instagram, Skate Athletics. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and please smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. I appreciate it as always. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later on Skate Athletics. That curve right there. So much fun.